And finally, I just want to address this uh, problem of why do scientists never give simple answers to simple questions? Well, one reason is, since the days of Newton and his apple, it's a great story, not true. Uh, historians now think he made it up to claim priority over Robert Hooke. So many of the questions that are now being attacked by science are very, very difficult, like global warming, like anything to do with nutrition. Incredibly complex questions. So they can't give simple answers because when they've tried, it's gone very badly for them because they've run roughshod over a lot of uncertainty and it's blown up in their face. Why don't they give consistent answers? Classic example is the red wine or coffee stories in nutrition. Again, it's because of the problem, the difficulty of what they're trying to do. In nutrition, they are constantly, and in many areas of science, epidemiologists would love an absolutely rock-solid way of proving cause and effect. That's what they'd like. But it's incredibly difficult. It's one of the outstanding challenges in turning data into insight, showing that it really does go, this really does cause that. Very often you can just reverse what's called the arrow of causality and make an equally plausible case. Why don't they always use the best methods? Well, we've talked about that very briefly. Why don't they all do randomised controlled trials? Why are you messing about with case control, and case studies and all this junk when we know it's unreliable? It's because we've moved on from the days of Pasteur, Lister. Lister was able to just um, uh, grab you know, a kid and, and, and test out his hypothesis using a, a random kid. Pasteur did the same when he was testing a rabies vaccine. Can't actually get away with that anymore. Don't know how many discoveries are going begging as a result, but there we are. You have to work with what we've got. This is why we can't just chuck away a lot of the less than perfect scientific studies. And of course, the, the, the most obvious answer is scientists aren't omniscient. And in fact, after 30 years, I'm, I'm getting, increasingly getting the, the feeling that the more they discover, the more they realise that they know very little at all. We've actually gone backwards in our understanding of the universe, for example. And I'd just like to leave you with this final uh, insight into why don't scientists give simple answers. This chap, anybody recognise him? OK, he's a social anthropologist, Claude Lévy-Strauss, uh, lived to a ripe old age, as you can see. And he said something, despite not being a hard scientist, said something I think is very, very relevant uh, about science, which is the scientific mind does not necessarily provide the right answers as ask the right questions. And I hope, as a result of this morning, you know that the secret to giving really good coverage of scientific issues is not necessarily to have the answers, but to ask the right questions. So, thank you very much. The last slide I'm going to put up are some very useful organisations. Um, Science Media Centre, incredibly useful. Um, once you get on their um, email list, they will um, send you um, quotes from experts in, uh, in, in various fields who have a view on uh, new papers that are still sometimes in preprint, uh, haven't yet been actually formally published. Um, they do a wonderful bef uh, bef uh, before the headlines analyses of stories that they know are going to get a lot of coverage and they systematically go through them and show you often what's wrong with them. Uh, and they will give briefings ahead of stories that they know are in the pipeline and they will help out track down experts. Sense About Science do something uh, uh, broadly similar. Online sites, we're very well served there with PubMed. The NHS Behind the Headlines service is very good. Um, they, again, tease apart what's being said on specific uh, subjects and show you what's right and wrong about it. Google Scholar, if you know how to use it, can be a very useful resource, especially if getting hold of papers very quickly, but they're not always refereed papers. You need to be aware of that. Podcast series, I'd strongly recommend you download and listen to uh, More or Less from um, BBC Radio 4 with Tim Harford and his colleagues. You will learn more statistics without the maths 
from listening to a few of their programmes than you will from any undergraduate course. Free economics, similar thing. They will sensitise you to the questions to ask. And of course, personal contacts. Uh, hopefully you will uh, feel uh, inclined to get in touch with statisticians who can help you out, ones that you make contact with via the Science and Media Centre and elsewhere. And by all means, take a note of my email address and if you uh, have a question uh, that arises as a result of today or in the future, just send me an email. Thank you.